video recommendation. Another excellent, excellent interview by Rob Rob Tebbett on Boxing Social. And, you know, I'm not trying to join Boxing Social. I'm not doing this for any political reason. I'm just telling you that when I see someone who is good at what they do, I have to, you know, recognize them for it. And Rob Tebbett, for me, right now, is the best boxing interviewer out there. For me, personally, I, I think he's the best right now. And I like Coogan. You know, big up Coogan. I think Coogan has been fantastic for the world of boxing interviewing over the past few years with IFL. I think Coogan is someone who's actually revolutionized it. <laughs> Some people might think that's a bit strong, but I think Coogan is fantastic at his job. But right now, I feel like Rob Tebbett on Boxing Soul, he's the man. <laughs> he is the man for so many reasons. This is another excellent interview that he's done with Frank Warren. Frank Warren being his usual self, <laughs> who, who can be a very slippery character. Uh, he says something very interesting in this interview, Frank Warren. He's talking about this Shelley Finkel, Eddie Hearn, Joshua Wilder situation where he claims that he was in on the negotiations, basically, that he was helping Shelley Finkel to negotiate the Joshua Wilder fight. And therefore, he was privy to the contracts and the details and all this kind of stuff. This is what he appears to be saying in this interview, and he said this in other interviews. Now, here's a question for you guys. I'm not making any accus accusations. This is just a question. That I'd like you guys to answer. I'm not even going to give you my take on it. I'm just going to ask you guys this question. If Frank Warren was quote unquote advising Shelley Finkel behind the scenes during the Joshua Wilder negotiations, did Frank Warren really want the Joshua Wilder fight to happen? Or did he want the Wilder Fury fight to happen all along? That's just a question. Did he give Shelley Finkel advice that would make the Joshua Wilder fight more likely to take place? Or did he have a vested interest in trying to scupper or sabotage that fight getting made? I'm not making any accusations. I'm just asking a question. I don't know. I've got no idea. I'm just throwing it out there because Frank Warren is a very ambitious man. He's an extremely determined man. <laughs> One of the most determined people I've ever seen in boxing is Frank Warren. <laughs> I mean, if you follow this guy's career, one thing I can say about Frank Warren is he is a fighter. This man don't have any quit in him. He is a fierce, ferocious competitor, Frank Warren. Any advantage that he could get over his main rival in the UK, Eddie Hearn, he's going to try get it. Any way that he could try and diminish what Hearn is doing and enhance his own position, he's going to go for it. Would he really assist in bringing about a fight that is going to bring his main rival an enormous amount of revenue? Would he do that? Now, some people might say, well, perhaps Warren really believed in Deontay Wilder and he was helping Shelley Finkel because he wanted Wilder to go in there and smash Joshua to pieces. Maybe, maybe. None of us know for sure, you know, but at the end of the day, even if Wilder did go in there and smash Joshua to pieces, there would have been a rematch. And in the first fight and second fight, Herm would have made an enormous amount of money. Would Frank Warren really want to assist in his main rival making that kind of money. You guys tell me. I mean I don't know. It's all just speculation. None of us are insiders here. Okay. I'm just putting it out there. For people to contemplate. But that's what he says here. That he was you know, behind the scenes. Helping Shelly Finkel. 
<laughs> I don't know exactly what capacity he advised him or what he was doing, helping Shelley Finkel behind the scenes in the Joshua Wilder negotiations. <laughs> I find that really odd, you know, uh, but it is what it is. So he talks about that. He also talks about boxing being in the doldrums 10 years ago. And he disputes the idea that boxing was in the doldrums 10 years ago. And he actually says that what killed boxing 10 years ago was the fact that Eddie Hearn put on the David Hay, Audley Harrison fight. He said, that's what killed boxing. Well, no, that's not true. Okay. Of course, there were world championship fights happening 10 years ago. Of course there were, but they were not the kind of numbers, the kind of pay-per-view numbers. And boxing was nowhere near as popular 10 years ago as it is now. This is a fact. I'm, I'm talking about in the UK here. If Frank Warren is seriously trying to say that boxing 10 years ago when he was at Sky, or 11, 12 years ago, whenever he was still at Sky, if he's seriously trying to say that boxing was as buzzing and as booming in the UK then as it is now, then, you know, this guy is going senile if he actually believes that. But the fact is, he doesn't really believe that, in my opinion. He's just trying to find a way to diminish what his main rival is doing and try and downplay it. That's what he's doing. He knows damn well that boxing is in a far better state now than it was 10, 12 years ago in Britain. You'd have to be insane to think anything else. Boxing is absolutely buzzing. It's at an all-time high virtually in Britain now. It was in a very good place in the 90s and you have to give Warren credit for that because of the shows that he put on in the 90s he put on some fantastic shows in the 90s but going into the 2000s certainly up and you know talking about 2006, 7, 8, 9 boxing was in the doldrums right it was in the dark ages in Britain it was doing terrible that's why Eddie Hearn was able to come along and put on things like Prize Fighter. that's where boxing was at Prize fighter was like, you know, bargain basement boxing. And as far as Eddie Hearn being responsible for the death of boxing, well, boxing didn't die with Hay Harrison. That's not, yeah, they, uh, Sky stopped putting on pay per view, but it wasn't because of Hay Harrison. It was because of Hay Klitschko. That's why they stopped putting on pay per view. <laughs> so I guess you could say it was a double whammy, but that wasn't Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn didn't promote David Hay versus Audley Harrison. That was a haymaker promotion. Eddie Hearn was just representing Audley Harrison. David Hay's the one who picked him to fight. <laughs> it's not like Eddie Hearn went out there and said, oh, let me put Hay and Harrison together and make that fight. No, he didn't do that. He wasn't the promoter of the fight. David Hay was the promoter of the fight. He decided that that fight was going to get made. He sold that fight to Sky as a box office event. So if anybody killed pay-per-view in Britain at that time, it was David Hay because of the Harrison fight and the Klitschko fight. That is what killed pay-per-view on Sky for a while. David Hay, not Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn was actually the one who revived it after David Hay put the final nail in the coffin. Boxing was in a bad place anyway in the UK. All right? That's why David Hay was able to be the big star that he was and played the UK public for as long as he did. And look, David Hay was fantastic in, in, in certain fights. And he overall, I would say, was good for British boxing. But when he moved up to heavyweight, there was a lot of funny business going on with David Hay. And he did, you know, he, he undid a lot of the good that he did at cruiserweight once he moved up to heavyweight. All right. So boxing was not in a great place. David Hay was able to manipulate the public and do what he, whatever he wanted and duck Klitschko for two years while he was WBA champion and convince the British public that he was, he was Klitschko ducking. He kept on saying, Klitschko's ducking me. Klitschko don't, don't want to fight me. Then he came out with the Audley Harrison fight and said, the reason I'm taking on Harrison is because the public want this fight more than they want the Klitschko fight. That's what David Hay actually said. <laughs> That was boxing in its dark ages, where it was just David Hay. You had, you had the rise of Frotch and stuff like that at the time. But you were not getting the popularity in boxing in Britain the way that it is today back then. So Eddie Hearn was actually part of the revival. He was putting on the prize fighters. 
he obviously put on a lot of frotch fights. Uh, and obviously when he took on Anthony Joshua, that's really what took his business to the next level. And what Frank Warren says with regards to Anthony Joshua is true. He says that Matchroom basically... The Matchroom's rise has been because of Anthony Joshua. Like Anthony Joshua has been carrying that organization. And that's true. It is true. Match <laughs> Anthony Joshua has been carrying Matchroom on his back. Matchroom owes a massive amount to Anthony Joshua. There's no question about it. But Matchroom was still doing well prior to signing Joshua. N nowhere near as well as they're doing now, but they were doing better than Frank Warren was prior to signing Joshua. Okay, or prior to Joshua becoming a pay-per-view star, more accurately. They were still doing well because Eddie Hearn, being a younger promoter, he understands the market better, the modern market, the younger market, the youth. Eddie Hearn better understood them than Frank Warren. And that's what gave him an advantage. You see, he understood the public more, the new generation more. Frank Warren was a little antiquated. He was a little out of touch. And that's one of the reasons that his fortunes fell on hard times. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> it wasn't just the Sky situation where, and he, I believe, Frank Warren, I can't remember how it went down now. Did he walk away from Sky or Sky said that they were going to do the exclusive deal? I think Frank Warren walked away first. I can't remember now. Maybe one of you guys can clarify in the comments. But either way, Frank Warren part of company with uh, Sky. Then Sky did this exclusive deal. No, I think it was... No, no, no. Frank Warren walked away and then they did the exclusive deal. Because I think after Frank Warren walked away, you still had Dave Coldwell as a small promoter putting on shows on Sky. You still had Frank Maloney, you know, and a few others. I, I think, if memory serves me correct. But then shortly after, Sky did, did this exclusive deal with Matchroom. And then it was only Matchroom as a promoter that was doing, you know, shows on there. So, yeah, he, uh, Frank Warren is right with regards to Anthony Joshua carrying Matchroom on his back. 100%, I agree. But they've still done a very good job with Anthony Joshua. Yeah, they've still done a very good job in promoting him. They've still done a very good job in matching him. And there's no guarantee that Frank Warren in a similar position would have done as good a job as Matchroom have done. Because again, Matchroom, at least Eddie Hearn, he understands the youth market because he's a much younger man than Frank Warren. And understanding the youth market is what has allowed him to do such a good job with Anthony Joshua, the way he's marketed Joshua, the way Eddie Hearn has made himself so publicly accessible. And I'm telling you, because I've been around long enough, Eddie Hearn is the most publicly accessible boxing promoter that's ever been in the UK. Prior to Eddie Hearn, you couldn't really communicate with boxing promoters. They had this high and mighty attitude where you couldn't talk to them. I mean, you just look at the amount of people that boxing promoters over the years have banned from their press conferences. I'm telling you, Frank Warren has banned plenty of people from his press conferences. I remember Steve Bunce talking about how I think it was Mickey Duff who banned him from press conferences. They banned loads of people from their press conferences. With Eddie Hearn, he's got these Deontay Wilder fanboy trolls who turn up to his press conferences and Eddie Hearn lets them in time after time and he'll speak to them. You understand? And I know he don't like these guys and I know he finds it frustrating and he gets upset, but he does it because why? He understands it's going to cause hype. He understands that you have to talk to these young people. You have to talk to the youth. Because this is where popularity comes from. It comes from what's going on with the youth. And the youth right now are on YouTube. They're starting their own YouTube channels and they're going out interviewing fighters. And you know many of them have got 100,000 subscribers and all this kind of stuff. Eddie Hearn understands how important it is to actually speak to people like that. Even if these are people who don't like him. That's how he stays relevant. You see, these are the things that Eddie Hearn understood from very early on. Frank Warren never understood. Frank Warren dismissed social media. He dismissed Eddie. Oh, Eddie, that Eddie Hearn is always on that Twitter. That's all he ever does. He didn't realize how important Twitter actually is. 
How many other boxing promoters, major boxing promoters are actually active on Twitter as themselves, not having somebody else handle their Twitter account for them and put the twi- tweets out for them? Eddie Hearn might be the only one, <laughs> right? Because he understands that's what it takes, you see? So it's not just a case of Anthony Joshua, uh, you know, carrying Matchroom on his back and that's all there was to it and Matchroom really did nothing. They're just along for the ride. No, Eddie Hearn knew a lot about the market. As a younger person, he understood the current zeitgeist among young people. He understood the mentality. He understood what they wanted. He understood how to, how to connect and engage with them and how to sell to them. Frank Warren did not understand these things. And that's why he's lost his way a little bit in the past few years since Eddie Hearn has come on the scene. Because Eddie Hearn is just doing a better job. That's the reality of it. He's doing a better job. Now, Frank Warren can still put on good fights. He's very experienced. He can still negotiate and all that kind of thing. But he's not as fan-friendly in terms of the fans being able to connect with him. He doesn't understand the boxing fans today as well as he did in years gone by because it's a different generation. And some of Frank Warren's business practices... I'm not going to go into specifics, but some of Frank Warren's business practices might be a little antiquated. That's all I'll say, okay? Some of his business practices might be a little antiquated. And some of his rivals like Hearn, etc., might be a little more progressive when it comes to some of their business practices than Frank Warren is. And that also may be another reason why people like Eddie Hearn are doing better than him. It's not just down to him signing Joshua and that's it. No, 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 no. If he believes it's just that, then he's never going to catch up to Matchroom again. He's never going to if he believes it's just that. But maybe he doesn't. Frank Warren is a smart guy. He's an egotistical guy. (laughs) He's a control freak in my opinion. But he's a smart guy, so maybe in his heart of hearts he knows where he's at fault. But he's not in the business of admitting his faults, generally, Frank Warren. He's not in the business of doing that. He's in the business of pointing out the faults or what he sees as faults of his competition. That's that's the business that he's always been in. (laughs) Of trying to smear whatever his competition does and big up himself. That's the business Frank Warren's in. And to be fair... Hearn and the other promoters, they pretty much do the same thing. Yeah, let's not make out that Eddie Hearn is 100% fair to Frank Warren. Eddie Hearn is saying this Deontay Wilder Fury fight ain't going to happen. Oh, it's not going to happen. You know, blah, blah, blah. To me, that's wishful thinking on Eddie Hearn's behalf. Eddie Hearn don't want the fight to happen. (laughs) He says he wants, he he says, no, it's a good fight. No, no, no. Eddie Hearn don't want Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury to happen. Let's be real. So that point right there, I have to agree with Frank Warren. Yeah, that Eddie Hearn's just, you know, uh, that's the competition coming in. You know, Eddie Hearn gritting his teeth like, are they really going to make Wilder Fury? What? (laughs) So Frank Warren there, I can definitely agree with him. Uh, But yeah, you have to look at things logically. You have to know Frank Warren's history. A lot of people don't know his history. You know, a lot of people hear me talking about Frank Warren and being somewhat critical sometimes and they think I'm being harsh. No, I know the man's history. If you know his history, if you know how he's behaved over the years, if you know where he's contradicted himself, if you know the the patterns, then you'll understand and you'll put the things he's saying today in context. You see? So anyway, I recommend this interview once again, Rob Tebbett. I'm not looking for a shout out from Boxing Social, by the way. Rob Tebbett, <laughs> if you're listening, you know, you shouted me out before. One shout out, shout out is good. You don't need to keep shouting me out or anything like that. I'm not looking for no shout outs. I just want to say, you know, fantastic work that Rob Tebbett is doing on Boxing Social. They need this guy. I, again, I don't know who is the proprietor of Boxing Social, but I'm not, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not suggesting that 
Rob Tebbett abandon you guys. Uh, all I will say though is Rob Tebbett needs to be on BT Sport or Sky or he, he needs to be on a big platform, really, this guy. I heard him in one of his uh, interviews saying that he he's not even driving, right? This guy should not only be driving, he should be driving a, a Ferrari or something, this Rob Tebbett guy, because he's very good at his job. A, an excellent interviewer. Right now, he's the best in the game, as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, he needs to be working for one of the big companies, if he wants to. Some people don't want to work for big companies, like me, for example. I've got no interest at all in working for Sky, in working for BT, in working for HBO, because some people have said this over the years. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily think I'd be a good fit for any of those organizations, but even if they did contact me and want me to come work for them, I would turn it down, even though it would increase my money, right, by a, a large amount, my yearly income. I'm not interested in that because I don't like working for people. I'd rather take less money and be independent and have my freedom and not have to ask permission when I'm going to take time off and go on holiday. No, I'd rather take less money and retain my independence, you know? So it's not for everybody, but a lot of people are happy working for other people and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I don't know what uh, kind of guy Rob Tebbett is with regards to that, but if he is the kind of person who, you know, is cool working for people, then he needs to be you know, working for Sky or BT or somebody, because that guy is very, very good at his job. So definitely shout out to that channel. Shout out to Rob Tebbett. Doing a fantastic job with uh, the interviews. The best in the game right now. Anyway, drop your comments in the comment section below. Let me know how you feel about everything I've talked about in this video. It's that, man. I'm out.